the Holy Spirit. Jesus followed the Holy Spirit everywhere. He was led. Sin can be only overcome by Him. That's it. It's the only way. I find that a law that when I would do good, evil is present within me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity of the law of sin. It's Romans chapter 7, 21 through 23. Now what has become of the law in the 8th chapter? Has it been removed no. or destroyed? So that there is no temptation or tendency to sin, as so many seem to expect? Hello, brothers and sisters. Are you listening? No more than the natural law that prevents a man living under water is done away when he descends in the diving apparatus. The law or tendency remains, but it's completely overcome or, or counteracted by a higher law which provides the means of life from above. Do you hear that? This law of sin, or this, this, this world of sin, see it as water. We live in it, we have to breathe, okay, under water. That's where we are in this world. This, this place is filled with sin. Everywhere you go, but God is offering to us. He's, he's given to us. But we don't take it. The Holy Spirit. Th to give us breath. To breathe underwater. The life comes from Him. It's not our own. So why do you try to hang on to something that you can't keep anyway? Right? Would you give it up and give something you can never lose? Right? So Paul says, The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Romans 8, 2. <coughs> it, is this, it is this working of the law of the spirit of life that continually counteracts the law of sin and death and makes it possible for the life of Christ's disciples to be like His. A series of uninterrupted victories. Amen. God's child is not a slave fighting to obtain His freedom, but a free man fighting to maintain the liberty secured to Him in Christ. Freedom is not the goal to be won as a result of Christian warfare, but is the necessary condition of a victorious life. Look, we're not talking about, you know, fighting this battle, this horrible battle, and I'm beaten every day. And you know what? I just barely, I just barely make it. Victory. Oh, but it came at such a cost. I was so beaten, right? Are you kidding me? This is not the battle. The battle is the Lord's. It's been won. Why do we walk around like we're defeated? He is defeated. We should be walking through the enemy's territory and, and making havoc like you wouldn't believe. Amen. We should be calling out the people. We should be just picking them out. Picking them up like brands. Poking them out of the fire. God has won this battle. This lion has no teeth. Okay? This is a done deal. This, this is a victory. We need to walk in the attitude of victory. Amen. God has won this victory. We walk around like, you know, ooh, you know, the barometer says it's going to rain. You know? And uh, the sun's shining. There isn't a cloud for a hundred miles. And people are like, there's going to be a storm. You know, this is how Christians act. We shouldn't be, we shouldn't be concerned with a thermometer either, no matter how hot it gets. Let the devil make it as hot as he wants. 
You are the son and daughter of Jesus Christ. You can do this thing. I mean, with the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, you know the problem with us is not that, that, that we don't have the Holy Spirit. The problem is, is the Holy Spirit doesn't have us. That's the issue. That's the issue in a nutshell. This is made very plain in a little illustration here. The natural law of a room at night is to be dark. Okay? Right? The tendency is not destroyed by bringing in a lighted lamp, but it is completely counteracted so long as the lighted lamp remains. If removed, the tendency is against is again evident for darkness reigns. Do we want to live in darkness? Or do we want to let the Holy Spirit shine His light? The dark room represents our hearts, and the tendency to darkness represents the law of sin working in our members. The lamp is Christ. On His entering our hearts, the tendency and possibility to sin are not destroyed but his presence completely counteracts the working of the law of sin so long as he reigns within. Do you hear a shout of victory? I heard somebody talking about the banners and everything. Come on. The church victorious? Man, it's like, I don't know if there's any fire in here. I think I've got to blow air into it. <laughs> But his presence completely counteracts the working of the law of sin, so long as he reigns within. Thus the law, the spirit of the life of Christ Jesus, makes me free from the law of sin and death. Amen? Amen. And by this blessed ministry of the spirit, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. But many are perplexed concerning this experience, because though they are certain of a very real victory in Christ, their victory is not complete. It seems to be partial or fragmented. And they long to be all Christ all the time. <coughs> Our experience seems to teach that we are more like a house with many rooms than one room. We invite the Spirit to come in and make Christ real within. But we don't give Him every room. How can we have real, true victory if the enemy has a room in our house. We're not letting Jesus occupy the whole home. Therefore is the problem. Because if we all were that individual or individuals allowing Jesus to dwell in every compartment of this house, okay, like Jesus did, like the pattern allowed the Holy Spirit full place, even in his most trying time when he's in Gethsemane, and he says, in his, his humanness, he says, I, I, I repel from this. I, I don't want to do this. If there be any other way, let me out of this. But nevertheless, thy will be done. You see, he never held anything back. He may have said, I don't want to. Did any of you want to die and take on all that sin? You couldn't do it anyway. We have no idea the price that Jesus paid. We can't even comprehend that. But we have got to allow him to have full place in our hearts. We are coming to a time, brothers and sisters, soon and very soon, where circumstances will play havoc on our convictions. Very soon. You know, this world is becoming, um, I, I mean, they, they know so much about everybody right now anyway. There, there's no place to hide, that's my point. No place to run, no place to hide. You need to let Jesus have full occupancy of your house. Because you cannot walk on your own. You will not make it. I don't care how, how many years you've sat in these pews and how many 
generations of Adventists you've been and how wonderful you think you are. If you are not wholly and solely dependent upon the Lord Jesus Christ, you are not going to make it. It's that simple. We've got to be sold out, lock, stock, and barrel. Like I told you, there's two places inside there. There's a throne and there's a cross. You make the decision on where you, where you take up residency. And you may think you're fine if you're sitting on the throne. But just remember, Jesus is on the cross. We want to live a life victorious. We want to see the church. The church is going through. God said the church is going through. There's no other place. He's promised that it's going through. But it's going to get ugly, brothers and sisters. I mean, it's going to get real ugly. But listen. Don't be focused on your neighbor. Don't be focused on yourself. Or whether this guy has an understanding that you don't have. Or <coughs> she does this and you don't. Focus on Jesus. Amen. Follow Jesus. Amen. And we're all going to make it. That's all we got to do. Keep following Jesus Christ. Listen, I, this, this life victorious, it can happen. Romans chapter 8. Focus right there. That's where the victory is. Because Romans chapter 7 is not where you want to be. That is not where you want to be. That's a wake-up call. That's what Romans chapter 7 is. a wake-up call. Let us allow the Lord Jesus to take over. Um, I chose that first song. Did you guys all know that first song, 237? It's a beautiful song, though, isn't it? I love it. I love it. All right, our closing song is going to be 435. Some more glory. Yes. Ready? Right. Could you plug the mic back in? Sure. You got to shut off in a second.
Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for this end time mission, missi, ah, message that we have, that you've given to us. We want to see you smile. We don't want to see you frown. Lord, help us. Help us to discover more about ourselves by looking deep into you. That we will relinquish these things that we seem to think that we need, that we want to hold on to. Lord, I pray that we could all follow the pattern. That we could desire and long to see you smile. To think this song to be true in our hearts. That we would sing it day by day. That glory for us would be nothing more than just to see you smile. Lord God in heaven, we love you so much. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you that you will pull this church through. That no matter what comes and how hard we are shaken, we will be victorious. Amen. And we want to vindicate your name, Lord. We want you to write your name upon us. We want to be fireproof. Please help us and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.